Hello, this is Brad from Survival Comms, and this is my first video in a series of videos I'm going to do on uh, inexpensive repeaters. Uh, I built this repeater 10 years ago. Uh, it's UHF, and I just cobbled together pieces and parts and uh, assembled it myself, and it works great, but I'm going to upgrade the radio so I can have uh, narrowband capable radios in there so I can use 12.5 kilohertz channels, whereas these will only do 25 kilohertz channels. Um, it's got a good controller in it. I'm going to re-put the controller. I've got an old modem housing right now. I'm going to go ahead and put it in this enclosure here and remote the LEDs so it'll it'll be prettier. And uh, I'm going to change the way the cabling is on it. Uh, I had to do this one here on the outside out of necessity because that's only a 5-pin radio instead of being a 16-pin, which is preferable for the radio series. But uh, we'll go ahead and get cracking. Okay, we'll go over some of the parts of a basic repeater here real quickly. Uh, this is mounted in an enclosure, which is nice. It's not absolutely necessary, but uh, it's nice to have everything in one package like this. Uh, this is the repeater controller. The repeater controller, essentially, when the, rate, when the repeater is receiving, it retransmits the information. It controls the transmitter, passes the audio back through it to the uh, transmitter from the receiver. And I have a, a receiver here, a transmitter here, and this is a power supply down here. You turn it around, and I have a duplexer down here. The Cliff's notes on a duplexer are simply that it allows a transmitter and receiver and duplex operation to share the same antenna. Uh, this, du this duplexer here is a simple notch type flat pack six cavity duplexer which you can get on eBay for usually around hundred dollars or so and so this one's UHF of course but you can kind of see it it's a small form factor uh, they can be a little tricky to tune but uh, once you get it tuned you're not gonna have to mess with it again unless you're uh, changing the frequency of it and uh, when you buy one of these you're not going to unless you're buying it from someone who actually is going to tune it for you, you're going to have to do it yourself or pay somebody to do it for you. It isn't something you can do with a um, portable radio and a dummy load or something like that. It's it, These are a little tricky to do that with. Yes, and I made the fan deck here to keep it cool in the back. You can see I've got two fans here. We're going to go ahead and get that out of the way. And you can see the fan deck here, and I put that together with a like a little Dean's connector here, where you can just unplug that from there and take that out of the way. You can see some of your interconnecting cabling here. You got your RF cable right here, which goes to your transmitter. RF cable from the uh, receiver down here. Power plug. This goes to the uh, repeater controller right here, and this one right here runs to the fans. And I did put a fuse in here, although this is really kind of superfluous because it's got uh, reverse current protection, but I just felt it was a good idea. It's always a good idea to put a fuse in there. I, I am overboard when it comes to safety on stuff like that. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to take this the rest of the way apart. And here's our wiring harness pulled out. Um, I try to make everything so it's very simple to service in the field whenever I put something together. Uh, I used a Molex connector here to uh, provide power for the fans and for the repeater controller. And then this is uh, your standard Motorola type plugs here, your two pin trailer plugs. And I uh, really like these uh, little miniature Anderson connectors there. Those things are fantastic. So we get that out of the way here. We can disconnect our repeater controller right here and take it out like so and then from the front here because I had to go in the mic port on it and now we're going to remove our 
repeater controller right here. You can see it's in an old modem enclosure. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we'll get that out of the way. We're going to go ahead and pull out our power supply here. See if it'll come out real easy. It's just a standard Astron 25 amp power supply right here. We're going to strip our transmitter and receiver out. receiver right here and the reason why I put that little plug in there is is on these um, these radios if you remove this right here it's basically in carrier squelch because you need to ground those pens together and that's usually why you'd have the mic hang up box and move our transmitter and voila Okay, and here's the repeater field stripped. Again, going over the components, we had an enclosure, a controller, a transmitter and a receiver, a power supply, and a duplexer. And this is the enclosure open showing you the repeater controller. This repeater controller is a ICS controller, and uh, it's a fantastic controller. Uh, they're not much money. I think I paid like $75 for it, and it's a lot of bang for the buck. Um, it does a DTMF over the air programming, CWID, it's got a beacon mode, I mean it's got many many other features and functions far in excess of what I use it for um, and uh, it's a nice small form factor too. Now down and dirty you can dispense with a repeater controller you'll have to build a hardware solution with a uh, cable to attach your transmitter and receiver together and to route the audio back and forth in a way to get it to toggle it to transmit. Uh, there's circuits you can build to do that, but it's something that's uh, it's radio specific. There are certain radios that are more easy to do that with. Uh, a lot of your more modern amateur radios, I think, uh, even come with a um, onboard uh, crossband repeat functionality. Uh, another thing you can dispense with is you can dispense with a duplexer if you have enough physical separation between two antennas. You're going to have to use two antennas. You're going to have to use a transmitter antenna and a receiver antenna. And you're going to have to physically separate them from each other to a certain degree. Uh, it's easier to do at UHF because of the uh, 5 megahertz offset. Uh, with the uh, VHF 600 kilohertz offset it's a little more difficult to do so. So you, you can as a down and dirty way of doing it. Dispense with that also. Power supply. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have an AC power supply. You could use a, a battery if you wanted to and uh, dispense with that all together. That's another way to do it. And this completes part one. I hope this helps. It's Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.